All right. So here we go. Um, so I had a little background earlier with the Bolshevik Revolution, what leads into the development of the um, the Soviet Union. But I think the bigger things is to get right into it with the musical elements, right? And that Shostakovich earlier on was associated with the Association for Contemporary Music, so it's a very modernist group that was influenced by what other things that were happening in the um, in Europe. Um, and then there was the Russian Association of Proletarian Musicians, which had a very political take on what they were doing, right? It needed to be associated with, associated with what was good for the country. And then in 1929, after Lenin's death, Stalin consolidated power, and we got the Union of Soviet Composers. Um, so being associated with that contemporary music group was not such a great thing to be, right? All right. So what that Union of Soviet Composers wanted right, is that you needed to support these ideas of socialist realism. So art, literature, drama, film, painting, it should be realistic in style and portray socialism in a positive light and celebrate revolutionary ideology and its hero, right? So lifting up those important people connected with whatever makes Russia great, right? It's kind of the thing that Hindemith was trying to do to appease the Nazis. Don't you have an author about a great German? Here we go. I can do this. Um, so for music, it needs the harmony needed to be accessible. So not interested in dissonance, atonality, or twelve tone composition, and folk songs or folk like style should be the goal for the melodic material. Right? People need to sing along if they want to. Actually, they might be forced to, or they will be killed. <laughs> right? <clears throat> All right. So with Prokofiev. After pursuing a career in the USA and Europe, particularly in Paris, he comes back to the USSR in 1936, kind of similar to similar to why Villalobos came back, right? Because he saw an opportunity to get some of his music performed. Um, and in 1938, the piece that you have in your anthology is the film score from Alexander Nesman, right? And so it's a propaganda film. It's all about the Russians being victorious over the enemy, and it uses folk songs, right? And it uses folk songs in a very martial kind of style. Then with Shostakovich, the big issue to remember with him, right, is Stalin coming to this performance and leaving even writing the article metal instead of music, right? Saying that Shostakovich's music was no good. And Shostakovich sort of retreating and realizing that he needed to make some, uh, uh, try to appease Stalin. And so, Symphony Number no. 5, you have the second movement from Symphony Number no. 5 in your anthology. And so that is his outward apology, right? But the biggest thing for both of them is propaganda and how propaganda influences what they do. Right? So we see Prokofiev sort of playing along with this and being a part of it. And there's a lot of discussion about the irony in Shostakovich's music and on the outside seemingly maybe to appease Stalin, but at the same time for musicians that are a bit more in the know, maybe a bit more sophisticated, that he really has a subtext right, about what he's doing there. And then all the pressure that he felt with friends of his who are being disappeared and how he's getting strange phone calls in the middle of the night and the kind of paranoia that he lives with when he's not still alive. <clears throat> All right. Those are our Russians. Our Soviets, I should say. <clears throat>